What up team and welcome back to Big Boys Boxing. Dang, I almost said Kiwi Box. Been a while since I said that one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, welcome back. And today, I've got a story. It's popped up out of the blue. And uh, it's an article. We're going to have a quick go through it before I open up the lines. Because this is going to be what this entire show is all about we may move on to something once we get some guests on but um, let's have a look at this article first so here it is and have a listen this is interesting Michael Hunter more than ready to fight Joseph Parker. Former WBO heavyweight champion Joseph Parker finally returned to the ring last Saturday night in Texas and knocked out Shondell Winters on the undercard of the welterweight bout between Mikey Garcia and Jesse Vargas. After the contest was over, Parker began pleading to land a fight against a top-rated contender. I want to keep busy and get hopefully two more fights this year and finish off with a good bang at the end of the year. Listen, I want to fight Derek Chisora. I was supposed to go and fight him. I pulled out, I wanted to reschedule, but he went off, fought someone else. I want to fight Dillian White again. I want to fight everyone in the top 5, or top 10 in the world. I want to get anyone and everyone, Parker said. But fighters like White and Chisora are already scheduled to take part in other bouts in the coming months. Another fighter, in the top 10, who is also looking for a big fight, is Michael Hunter, who last saw action in December when he fought to a close points draw with Alexander Povetkin. Hunter is more than ready to answer Parker's call for an in-ring showdown, and his team believes the New Zealand star would get knocked out in the bout. Parker is an easy opponent for us, Hunter's manager Martin Mikolajczak told Sky Sports. Parker is slow on his feet and his cardio is terrible. Michael would definitely co Parker. Parker holds a close and some felt controversial win over Andy Ruiz, but lost 12-round decisions to Anthony Joshua and Dillian White. Hunter's manager Mikolajczak warned Parker that he would be facing a style of boxer that he'd never faced in the past. White and AJ are completely different fighters to Michael. Tags, Michael Hunter, Joseph Parker. So there you have it. And the line I've highlighted there, I found pretty funny. Parker is an easy opponent for us, Hunter's manager Martin Mikolajczak told Sky Sports. Parker is slow on his feet and his cardio is terrible. Michael would definitely co Parker. <laughs> Why did it make me laugh, you say? Well, Michael Hunter's cardio didn't look too shit hard in his last fight. Did it now? <laughs> and you know, Parker's been 12 rounds at elite level a few times in his career. So, when he's prepared for the opponent, I can't see how his cardio is a problem. <laughs> but, you know, it's his manager, for sure. He's trying to promote the fight, but he's also making himself look like a bit of an idiot at the same time. Um, not to say... Michael Hunter couldn't KO Joseph Parker. That's a possibility. But I think the probability of it is a lot lower than calling it a possibility. It's more like an improbability. Not an impossibility. <laughs> so good to have you all in. L Dog in the house. Uh, who else we got here? Phil Carl Roberts, good to have you in, brother. We got Mala2243 in as well. Alright, looks like a lot of the regulars are already in. So, I will drop a link. There's the link to the direct um, Discord link. And I will get into the channel. Boom. I'm in there. 
So anybody who would like to come talk about this fight between Joseph Parker and Michael Hunter, the possibility of it, the outcome, the uh, there's some differing differing opinions. I mean, I was reading a couple of things along the bottom of that article in the comment section. You know, people, some people say, what's one here? <clears throat> Just don't see Parker. Parker's management um, rushing to make that fight. Hunter is too high risk and too low reward for them. Uh, yes and no for me to that comment. Um, if I go look at the rankings, both of them have got rankings. And almost everybody now so we've got Joseph Parker is in the WBC at number seven and Michael Hunter we see he? he's number 11 in the WBC the WBA Parker doesn't have a ranking in there but he will next time they refresh because his last opponent was number four but they refreshed the rankings after Fury versus Wilder but before uh, Parker versus Winters so Deontay Wilder's in there at the WBA number two <coughs> um, Michael Hunter where's he Robert Hellenius Alexander Darius number nine with the WBA so I imagine Park is probably going to be in around maybe he'll just take Winter's place at 14 but I think he'll be a bit higher than that now that he's fought in a WBA sanctioned fight you see um, he might be at number 11 above Sergei Kuzman but below um, Kubrat Pulev possibly who knows um then who knows if they even actually pay wba sanctioning fees for that fight but ibf um michael hunter where's he at michael hunter's number seven and joseph parker's number 12 so they can't really get a final eliminator anywhere by the looks of it. We've got in the WBO, Joseph Parker is number two. And Michael Hunter is number seven. So that's probably the most likely one that they could get s some kind of eliminator. But I don't know if Joel will want to do that either. Because that position that he's sitting on there, if... The WBO belt ends up getting stripped at any point this year then Joe's in the driver's seat to get a title shot right there but you know how Joe's management has been working recently is if there's not like a fight against Alexander Usyk's a fight they would take if it was for the WBA uh, WBO title but I don't think they'd take it for nothing however Joe fought Dillian White for nothing, didn't he? So, oh, maybe there was a WBC silver title on it, actually. I can't remember. But it was basically for nothing, wasn't it? So, I think Joe would take that fight. You know, one of the reasons he signed with Matchroom is so he could fight some Matchroom fighters. So, get it done, man. Get this fight made. Who gives a shit what Michael Hunter's manager says? He's trying to promote his man. He ain't... He honestly can't really think that Joseph Parker would be an easy fight for, jo for Michael Hunter. That's just crazy-ass talk. Dude's a former world champion. Never been stopped. And Hunter will definitely knock him out. His manager says, Ha! Fucking laughing stock, man.
I need WBO. Parker should have beaten White. Yeah, well, notice. <clears throat> Even though it was a great fight and they both made a hell of a lot of money, Dillian White doesn't want to run it back. I wonder why. <laughs> we all know why. He got lucky. A hey, David Mason. You know that one. This is a tune I've been singing ever since the fight happened. Let's see a rematch. Come on. Same with the Ruiz fight for Parker. I want to see a rematch of that one. Not when Ruiz is 280 fucking pounds though. Fat shit. <clears throat> Phil Carl Roberts. Parker needs another fight in between. He was fighting a guy th three steps. Yeah, well, he was fighting a guy a hell of a lot lighter than him. But Michael Hunter's not going to be much heavier than Shondell Winters, is he? Let's go and have a look at. I'm going to have a quick look at Michael Hunter's weights for his last few fights. The fancy his manager saying shit like his cardio is shit when his fighter tried to start fast against Alexander Pavekin, blew his ass out, and was lucky to get out of the fight alive in the end. So it was what it was. Hey Marla, how you doing, brother? You hear me loud and clear? Yeah, man. Yeah, good, mate. Sweet ass. What do you reckon of the potential of this fight? Oh, great fight! I, I heard about it this morning. I was really excited about it. Uh, but I got—I heard they're talking about doing Junior Far <sighs> for Joseph Parker. Yeah, uh... I've got the article. It was on stuff. Um, hang on, I'll—I'll uh, I'll find a link. And I'll put it in the chat. But yet they're already in talks with Junior Far because the zone's coming to New Zealand. Oh, is it? And I. Yep, Ooh. and I think they may be um, going to do the Junior Far Parker fight as part of the DAZN sort of, you know, breakout sort of coming to New Zealand sort of thing. Okay. Well, uh, I, I have. On, I've... I did hear the other day Eddie Hearn mentioned on some interview that they were thinking about doing a show for Joseph down in New Zealand. So that kind of connects those dots a bit, doesn't it? Yep, yep. I've got here it is. Uh, just put the link in the chat. There it is. So I think what you may see is possibly Parker Junior Far next, and then Hunter at the end of the year. Wow. Okay. That's uh, what I suspect might might happen. I prefer the Hunter fight, man. I you know, but yeah, um, yeah. I, I feel I definitely prefer the Hunter fight as well. But having a Junior Far fight down here would possibly give me an opportunity to get to a Parker fight. So. Uh, that's not such a bad thing. Um, I don't think Junior would do so well in the fight, but uh, who knows? He might pull one out of the bag. What do you reckon? Has Junior got a shot against him? Oh, I think Park will get him. Yeah. Yeah, I think Park will smack him, to be honest. I think he's, he's just... It would sort of remind me of um, Evander Holyfield, George Foreman sort of thing. I think Park has just developed more since they were amateurs. He's got the hand speed, combination punching, more punch variety, more experience. Yeah, I think um, Park will knock him around, to be honest. Yeah, I can see Junior um, on, a, on his bike all night trying to do a Huey Fury. But uh, yeah, yeah. Joe would, like you say, I think Joe will get him. But um, I think so. I think... So I think, yeah, I'm thinking. If he, oh, take, going, mate? if he takes that fight, because um, Junior's got a WBO ranking, doesn't he? Where is he? Exactly. Number six, yeah. Oh. So, number six. If he beats Junior Far, it depends what Michael Hunter does before the end of the year, too, I think. Because if he fights yeah. somebody who's got a ranking that high, I don't know if he needs to fight Michael Hunter. He can try and get a final eliminator against somebody. If he hasn't got a shot at a title already. Yeah, what's going to happen? Like the WBO, unless unless the WBO um, say to AJ, you know, you don't have to do your mandatory. Um, AJ's going to have to fight Usyk or Chisora at the end of this year, the winner of that fight. 
So if if Chizora beat if Usyk beat Chizora, and then Usyk got the fight against AJ at the end of the year, you might be able to see Parker Chizora at the end of the year. Yeah, and that's the fight Joe wants to, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. So th so that might, that could happen. But wow. um, yeah, interesting possibilities for him. But uh, Joe won't be getting a title shot this year. I I can't see it. No, the only way he can get a title shot this year is if that WBO belt gets vacated. But um, yeah, and, and I don't think AJ's going to do that. So that's yeah, it seems to be getting more and more likely that um, undisputed is not going to happen. Therefore, AJ can just fight his two mandatories in a row and wait for undisputed next year. See if they can get that happen. So interesting. Um. You want to give us a breakdown of how you think the Michael Hunter versus Joseph Parker fight might go, just while I swap over to my phone, mate. You there, Muller? Yep, yep, sit right, mate, yep. Yeah, I just, oh, man, that's, uh, well, Hunter's got the speed. It's going to be a speed battle, actually, because Parker's quick, too. And I, I think if... Uh, what's the reach on Hunter? Is it the same as Parker? I think so. Um, I yeah, he'd actually, be about... Yeah. I'll look it up in a minute once I change it. Yeah, I, I think um, I think Parker will be a, a bit more... If Parker comes in at about 240, 245, I think he could be a bit more work for Hunter than what they're bargaining on, eh? Yeah. Because Parker, you know, Parker's a bit... He's, he's, he's a solid guy and he's still got good hand speed, good double jab. He's... He's mixing his punches up. That's one thing I did like against um, the last opponent. Yeah, he he was throwing both hands. He was going body and head. I I think um and Hunter Hunter's used to being the qu the quicker guy. That's one thing he does have. He's not the biggest heavyweight, but he's fast. And against Parker, he's not really going to have that advantage. So I I think Parker's going to be a bit harder for him than uh, what what he's expecting. Well, at least harder than what his manager's expecting anyway. Yeah 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 <laughs> yeah man. Because I mean, so, as you say, um, Parker's gone round. Parker's gone rounds. You know, he, he's he's yeah. um yeah. So I don't know what they're talking. I, and I, Parker's I, slow on his feet. It's like, well, geez, he's 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 not that bad a mover, really. No, he, especially if he's fighting a bit lighter in the two thirties, he's got no problem with footwork whatsoever, really. Um, he yeah, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see what weight he actually comes in for the Hunter fight. Eh, he was yeah. two forty five for the last one. Yeah, I don't like him over 240, eh? Yeah, 238's good. For, eh? 238, 240's good. It's big, but it's not too big. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if he comes in 238, 240, he's still, he's still a good size heavyweight. But just, to, but yeah. I think his gas tank is better at that weight. Yeah, definitely. And with regard to Hunter, I'm wondering, how come they haven't ordered... Uh, Pavikin versus Hunter again. If it was an eliminator, you'd think you need to get a result. So, I thought they should run that back, but I guess Pavikin's got a, a fight against Dillian White that's paying two, three, four times more than um, it would be for fighting Hunter. Well, you can't blame him for going that way. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I want to see a rematch with Parker and Dillian White. Hey, that fight grates with me, man. Yeah. It really grates me. When people say to me, oh, you know, he he, he beat Parker, and it's like, come on, you know he got a 10-8 round off a head clash, man. You know, yeah, that, well, that, and that was right had, in front of the referee. Yeah, that fight was He had to draw. lead with his head, hit him with the head and a left hook to put Parker down, and he still only went down to one knee. <laughs> man. You know, you know so, and it, they gave him a 10 8 round for it. It's like, oh, come on, man. But everyone, that, that fight was a draw. It was six rounds each with one legit knockdown each. It was a very even, very hard fight. You know, I, I'd love to see another one. Yeah, it would be awesome. Um, but hopefully, one way or another, one, we're going to get some news about what Parker's going to do. And I want to know what Hunter's going to do, too, because he hasn't had a fight since that. Um, card and Saudi, he needs to get moving again too. If he's after a title shot, Eddie needs to get his ass working for him. I know he's a busy man, but he's got lots of lots of underlings to help him get shit made. He's got 
three big or two big cards coming up in a couple of months to get all his fighters out on so um hopefully parker can get on one of them and maybe hunter as well but if we get a fight down here i wonder where it's gonna be auckland again yeah oh yeah probably auckland i reckon again well they might yeah, you went to crush did, or did yeah oh that would yeah because he hasn't fought yeah. yet is he oh oh and yeah, you could be good to, that it would be yeah man it would be it would be good to to see him again you know see parker in new zealand again it would be the last time i would imagine Apparently this yeah is, this he, you know when he's winding down his career maybe has a fight or two back at home just for fun yeah. sort of thing but yeah or charity bouts or something but um yeah i, was, I thought that flory's fight was the last one we we're going to see in new zealand that's um why i was so happy to win some tickets to get there it was awesome was that was that the one when you you got to meet everyone and yeah. yeah 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 we went we met joe and kevin in the uh in the media conference room a few hours before the fight before he went and got changed pretty much when he turned up um it was good there was only a few people there um the mad butcher was in there and he had a guy in there that um he managed to get a visit he was a disabled guy and had a um no real media in there it was it was um it was cool it was only about seven of us in there so it was good we got to have a good chat and um yeah but uh thank you very much to the rock radio station for that one that was awesome and yeah. that, thanks to my missus for getting in the draw too <laughs> but, um, we've got some great fights coming up this year though hunters match room may eh? so they can definitely make that parker fight yeah oh it can be made not a problem the only the only thing stopping it i think would be money um because for both guys it's high risk so they'll want to get paid for their troubles uh they've both got high rankings as i was going through earlier so um it's risky for both guys even though there's there's not a belt at the end of it so um i would yeah. like to see it though oh definitely, oh, definitely like man but as i say i think you'll see junior far because parker wanted the big bang at the end of the year so you'll probably see junior far and then whoever they can get for the end which will either be hunter or chisora or um you know someone like that maybe dillian white yeah yeah well, i think junior's probably gonna gonna get his wish it wasn't it was about it was around the time of the flores fight just before that actually um parker was trying to get a fight with junior far and apparently junior was asking for a million dollars and yeah, yeah at, price at himself time, out yeah at the time that's pricing himself out really so um you got a question been... here oh yo you got a question yeah, here man. you got to meet parker big boys as he as chill as he comes across off camera yeah man chill as cool as a cucumber he's a, he's pretty much the same off camera as you see him on camera so what you see is what you get um i wish he was a bit more of an angry fucker though <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, we were talking about parker wilder today on Rafi's stream and who would win and i sort of went oh well i'm sort of 55 45 wilder because i thought if parker can get inside on wilder with his combination punching and hand speed he could tear wilder up he could give him hell but the thing is would parker be aggressive enough that was the thing yeah. that concerned me would he would he would he be able to get in there and go first with his punches on the inside and be really aggressive because if he was tentative he'd he would find himself on the outside and in the end he would catch a right hand so i sort of leaned towards uh wilder at that one um and some of the other guys were some were picking parker some raffi was like 51 49 wilder and it was quite a close sort of one uh, yeah well it's a, it's a hard one you know um even if parker was aggressive enough there's a high chance that he'd get in too close and smother his work like he was on the weekend <laughs> so yeah you know. yeah he was doing that eh? he, I, he was smothering himself yeah like he yeah. he's he's good if he gets into the pocket and throws a good combination and then gets out but he doesn't want to muck around on the outside if he's fighting wild he doesn't want to be you know posturing no. and fainting out there he wants he wants to be in closer where he can slip punches but doesn't want to be in too close because right up on your chest he's not very good 
it's yeah. not really that good at all. Yeah. Unless it's a lower level opponent, you know. Um, I remember back when he stopped, was it Richard Tutaki? Uh, one of his earlier fights in New Zealand. That was a right up close fight. It wasn't very long when he knocked him out with an uppercut. Um, but he just looked really uncoordinated on the weekend against Shondell Winters in close. So, yeah, it's a tough one. But um, Parker would definitely have a chance, I think. I'd oh, yeah, probably mate, still pick yeah. Wilder. But who knows? His legs might be shot now. <laughs> who knows? Yeah. God, it's um, he's he's taken he's exercised his option, so he he'll be fighting Fury in July. He's giving himself four and a half months to improve himself. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's a question I can't get out of my head. What's he going to do? What can he realistically no. change in that time span? Long man, bugger all. Yeah, so I don't know, man. Um, it's not really a fight I'm looking forward to, but. If he pulls it off and gets his belt back, uh, there's going to be a, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of us eating humble pie, man. <laughs> yeah, and then then AJ Wilder, the, the talk will start again. It will, um, and maybe after both of them taking a loss, when the opportunity for the fight to happen comes up, they won't be dancing around money and excuses and venues and networks and all that kind of shit. Maybe they'll just get it done because. They've both maybe learnt now that the opportunity was there. AJ took a loss. And then, you know, Wilder says AJ's irrelevant now that he took a loss. So, just got his belt back. And then Wilder loses, so, you know. <laughs> it's still a good fight. And, you know, some people say, oh, it's lost a bit of its edge because they both had a loss. But I guarantee you, if they signed to fight each other, come fight time, it would be a big fight on pay-per-view it would be successful i it'd guarantee be, people would still tune in man i think it'd probably even do better than fury versus joshua because it'd be have the atlantic between it you know big um, bangers you know two big bangers and the you know someone's getting smashed yep yep two different countries two big bangers so i mean there's nothing wrong with AJ Fury either. That would do massive numbers in the UK by itself. But, um, yeah, if, it's the fight we've wanted to see for so many years, isn't it? So, yeah. Oh, AJ I Fury would be, I, I would be excited about AJ Fury. Most people think Fury's going to win. And I think if AJ come in, come in trim, um, like he did against um ruiz I, I think that fight could be a bit closer than what people are thinking yeah definitely um i think aj's probably the man who's got the best chance of beating fury as of right now but you know we're still riding pretty high on that fury win and that seems to be the trend when when one of the big fighters has a big win everyone gets high on that fighter for a good month or two and then yeah, it sort yeah definitely of, sort of dies down eh? so We've got a question here from Dwayne. Uh, Jono, how was your bet? Hope you cashed. Oh, no, my bet. <laughs> Cal Yafai wrecked it for me. But um, I ended up throwing a little something on Vargas because he had good odds just to try and uh, break even for the weekend. <laughs> and that one fucked up too. <laughs> so I had a yeah, bad weekend. I I didn't think Garcia was going to win. Uh... I I kind of thought, you know, Vargas is just too big and he's got a pretty good jab. He's got good volume. He hasn't got huge power, but I thought he'd be able to keep Mikey out all day. But Mikey's got that timing. He didn't throw a lot of shots, but um, it was it ended up a pretty close fight. I, I actually still scored it to Vargas um, on 15... I'm 15, 112, because there was a knockdown in there. Yeah. Um, something like that, but um, I'm not going to argue with it. I was probably a little bit biased because I was uh, reaching to try and get my money back from the previous bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You yeah, never know what that's like. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, God, oh, um, Dillian White, man, against, uh, if he shows up in shape against um, 
Povetkin, I, I think he should win if he, if he shows up physically and mentally, you know, on point. But if he doesn't, he comes in overweight. Geez, he could he could end up getting cracked by Povetkin. Povetkin showed against Hunter he can still fight inside and throw good shots, you know. It's going to be a good yeah. fight. Yeah. I think when we get closer to the fight, we can make a more accurate prediction. But yeah. Yeah, if White doesn't come in shape, he could get in trouble. I mean, Povetkin one of those. Old. He's old, but he's still freaking dangerous, particularly in the first few rounds. But, you know, like we saw against Hunter, he kind of came on in the second half for a 40-year-old. Did. It's good. I mean, I was looking at, um, it, it was like um, Dillian's one of those guys, you got to wait till the weigh-in. Yeah. Just to, just to see what he actually looks like. Yeah. Um, actually, I, oh, I must ask Sporting Icons if he knows whether Dillian's back training at that sports institute of some sort that he was training at that's what got his body into tip-top shape for a few fights in a row there um and i heard when that drug debacle happened he stopped training there i didn't know if he was going to go back maybe sporting will have that information depressed after that um thing with the drugs yeah yeah but it's all cleared up no more excuses oh there was a comment he made in a video yesterday and i saw saw them uh, publish it on boxing scene again today something about to be a champion you got to be prepared to fight anywhere in the world it wasn't that long ago he turned down a final eliminator against kirbat pulev because it was in bulgaria so <laughs> he contradicted his own comment there he turned down a few fights, so didn't he turn in a? Didn't they tell him to fight Ortez or something to get the number, the mandatory with the WBC? Yeah, the second secondary mandatory behind Brazil. Um, he turned that down when they were he was ordered. He also was offered a fight against Dominic Brazil for the mandatory spot that he had, but apparently Dominic Brazil said he wanted five million dollars, but. It's kind of pricing yourself out, but at the same time, he's sitting on the mandatory spot, so he can put a price on it, can't he? Yeah, yeah, twat now. God. <laughs> so, um, you know, Dominic Brazil already had his shot. That could have been Dillian. Kubrat Pulev's getting his shot on the 20th of April. That could have been Dillian. And it's only him to blame <laughs> for not being in those fights, so... It is what it is, I guess. Maybe he just really wanted Deontay, but if he really wanted Deontay, he would have fought Brazil, or he would have. Oh, would have, he would have hammered Brazil. He would have. He would have hammered Brazil, man. Yeah, he would have. I mean, what would have been the big deal if he had of, you know, taken the lump, fight for nothing for one fight? He would have hammered Brazil, like you said, and then he would have been into a title shot. So he would have got paid for that one. He would have had, yeah, damn. He hasn't made it easy on himself, but no, he's um pretty particular, he wants things his way, and that's that, it seems. So it's also about money, too, for him. That was the only reason he fought Joseph Parker, wasn't it? Yeah, god, they yeah. threw that fight together quickly, actually. Six weeks, I think it was, but yeah, um, shit. Could you imagine if they did a show in New Zealand still and they threw that fight together with Michael Hunter in a hurry? Ooh, oh, man. That'd be yeah, awesome. That'd be great. Yeah. Scott. Oops. I hope you're not listening. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not exciting enough for me as Junior Far. It's, uh, I still yeah, it's, um, it's not a fight I'm overly... Cause I, originally this morning I read about the Hunter fight first and I was like, yes, yes. And then I read the second article about Junior Far, and I was like, oh, God. It was, it was a, a bit deflating. Yeah. Oh, our dog's got some news for us. Um, Hergovic versus Jerry Forrest has been confirmed for April 17th. Um, Jerry Forrest. Shit, I thought he was going to be fighting someone else. True, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm sure I heard someone talking about Jerry Forrest the other day. But Hergovic Forrest, that's not too bad a fight for Hergovic. Um, do you know Jerry Forrest? 
Muller? No, no, I haven't. I better, better bring him up then. And have a look. But uh, I watched him. He fought Jermaine Franklin. And um, I thought he beat Jermaine Franklin. But uh, he got split decision win. Did, um, and so, was what it was. I've been copping a bit of flack on the channel for the video <laughs> that I dropped about that. You know, everyone has their opinions, just like an asshole. <laughs> yeah, man. Yep. Right, Jerry Forrester. Forrest. Come on, Google. A bit slow. Hope my computer's not going to crash again like the other day. You still there, Muller? Uh, yep, I'm just reading a thing here. David Mason said, uh, was it Joshua versus Ruiz 2 was a fix? <laughs> How so? You can't um, fix it when um, Ruiz can't hit him. Yeah. <laughs> You know, when, shit out of him. when Joshua lost to Ruiz the first time, I was, my instant thought was, hmm, I wonder if that was on purpose so Joshua could come back, avenge the defeat, and improve his stock. And look how big that second fight was. That was huge. So, yeah. Which one's fixed? If not both? If any. You know, he can theorize all we want. I don't believe either of them were fixed to be to be honest. Oh, I, I look at AJ. He was he was geez, that, that right that left hook he got hit with absolutely stunned him something bad, man. I watched a doco on it and um, they had different people talking about the fight and they showed a replay of him getting hit with that left and you see his legs just they weren't working. <laughs> you know, he was trying to he, he was trying to um he wanted to stay up, AJ. You could see mentally he was still thinking. You know, he still wanted to stay up, but his legs weren't responding to his um, to his commands. He was just all over the place. So, yeah, yeah, he was shot. Yeah, no. terrible shot. All right, all right. So I've got Jerry Forrest up on screen at the moment. He's twenty nine three and O. Oh. Um, no, he's he's South Boy. I thought. He uh, he's six foot one. He's not a big dude, but uh, he's got a seventy-eight inch reach. Um, he's from Virginia. He resides in Virginia, Virginia, and he was born in um, Louisiana. But uh, and there's no Hergovic confirmed on here yet. But I have faith in Eldog. Um, looking through his, but there's the Jermaine Franklin win, a uh, loss. He, he beat Joshua Tufty. Some of y'all might know him. Another journeyman, Grover Young. Um, more importantly, who else is to, I guess, give us a more idea of his level. He's not a bad fighter. Um, Pretty smart. I oh, had two losses in a row down his down his career, but so he lost to Michael Hunter. Well, holy shit! And he lost to Gerald Washington. Actually, I think I remember the fight. Second round KO. That's right. And he lost by UD to uh, Michael Hunter. Michael Hunter can knock Joseph Parker out easily, but he can't knock out Jerry Forrest, who Gerald Washington knocked out. <laughs> Funny. But, what um, date's Chisora Usyk? Um, May, is it? I don't, I don't think it's actually confirmed yet. Let's, let's have a look. But they were slated for the and paid um, Ruiz to get fat. 
all it, all um, Louise had to do was smack Joshua on the ear, and then he got all the tacos he could ever ever want. <clears throat> no conf no confirmation for Shizora versus Usyk. Did they say the twenty eighth of May somewhere there? I think might have been the date they were talking about. I guess um, that's yeah, because it went two months. I put it back two months, so eh? yeah. Um, I guess that one's going to be pay per view as well. So that's three pay per views: May, June, July. Three pay per views in two months. Because when's White and Pavikin? Uh, May twentieth, is it something? I know Joshua and Poo level on the 20th of April. To June. Oh, 20th of June. Yeah. My memory's like a sieve these days. I did a video about it. I used to. I keep track of all these dates. There's so yeah. much happening. But Derek Chisora, they haven't, they haven't confirmed it yet. It's not on his, uh, no, not on his thing. But Anthony Joshua, oh, sorry, I was just mumbling to myself. Yeah, so, yeah, June no. 20th, I think. Anthony Joshua, I'm looking at it. Where is it? Yeah, 20th of June. Yes, yep. um, the 2nd of May is White versus Pavikin. So, if they have a pay-per-view at the start of May and a pay-per-view at the end of May, and then another pay-per-view two, three weeks later in April, there's going to be some unhappy UK boxing fans. <laughs> See that, um, is it, I can't pronounce the guy's name, Telefimo, is it? Telefimo. Tele, uh, against Lopez, I reckon that's happening. Oh, yeah. TFMO yeah, they're talking. They're Chico. talking about. Yeah, they're talking about that happening. It's already confirmed. Isn't um, it? Yeah, yeah. I think there's some. I was reading up on one of the boxing channels um, uh, yesterday, and they're looking at Crawford, Cal Brook, and Terence Crawford. Man, he can't really um, catch catch the the breaks, and yeah. as far as big fights go, you know, kind of shot himself in the foot. Signing long to or re signing with top rate with his yeah. welterweight, so um, okay. Lopez and Lomachenko isn't confirmed yet. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah I, I read it on um, uh, boxingnews24.com, okay. Uh, yesterday, I think it was, but it may not be confirmed. But they were talking a big talk about it. It sounded like it was going to be done. I hope it happens. That's a good fight. Um, you know, many didn't think that uh, Lopez was going to. Was it Richard Comey sparked out? Was yeah, Richard Comey knocked him out in two rounds or something. Nobody expected that. Um, a lot maybe thought that Tiafimo would win. Possibly by stoppage if it was later in the in the fight, but um, certainly shown that he's got a bit of pop. So if he can land on Lomachenko, we could get an upset. But, uh, that in itself is a mission trying to land on Lomachenko. So good fight, though, man. Looking forward to that one. Um, we've got that Dorticus Breeders fight soon too, which is another good one. The WBSS final. Let's have a look when that is. Yonia Dorticos. There it is. It's on the 21st of this month. 21st of March, so. A couple of weeks. And that's uh surely that's going to have some good stuff on the card too this event 
Gordicus Brutus, um, foreign names I can't pronounce. Oh, Yo, Manuel Char versus Trevor Bryan, purse bid won by Don King. <laughs> yep. Um, finally, those two inactive fighters are going to move two belts into one because Bryan's got that interim title and Char's got the regular title. So um, we haven't got a date or a venue yet, but um, I think Boxing Square dropped a video on that. It's got a few prospective dates in there. But, um, yeah. But, uh, what else you got? Andy Ruiz Jr.'s options for August are Chris Ariola and Adam Kalnacki. I hope he fights Kalnacki. Yeah, everyone's saying the same thing. They want to see the Kalnacki fight. I want to see the Kalnacki fight too. But um, I'll bet you it's going to be Ariola. Um, yeah, I, I reckon. It's a pity Areola's that far past it, but maybe it'll be pretty even if um, Ruiz hops in the ring at 280 pounds. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's a fight I called for a while back. I think it was straight after the Parker fight, Ruiz. Um, I thought, okay, as a, as a comeback fight, why not? jump in there with Chris Areola. I've seen Chris Areola do an interview saying that he used to help Ruiz out when he was an amateur. Um, they used to spar a bit and he was a really good kid and he'd like to fight him one day. It'd, it'd be a big deal down in Mexico, man. It'd be a huge deal. Huge. But, uh... yeah. Billy Joe, when see, they're talking about Billy Joe Saunders fighting um, Canelo. Apparently, I don't know if that's... Con- that- it's not confirmed yet, but apparently it's back in play because I I heard it was uh, it was scrapped, so they went and tried to chase Callum Smith, did Canelo. Um, oh Callum, yeah, yeah. Callum Smith didn't want any of that for some reason, um, or he wanted more money or something, <clears throat> or he wasn't happy with what was in the contract. I don't know, but um, then they went and chased Caleb Plant, trying to get him a fight fight against Canelo but only on short notice Caleb Plants is yeah I'm happy to fight Canelo but not on short notice um I'm not gonna jump through your fucking hoops just because you're Canelo (laughs) (laughs) good on him for that um it was a it was a shame about um Jamal Charlo um Andre you know know what what Jamal think what I don't know Andre? what he's thinking with his. Uh, they were taught when Eddie Hearn off um, and Andre, they wanted to fight Jamal Charlo. Yeah. And it didn't yeah. happen. Real shame. Yeah, what was, what was Eddie's um, Charlo saying? Don't send me the offers. I don't yeah. know if fights happen. But then in a, another video not long before, um, he was saying, I'm my own boss. And. Eddie had also said he'd sent Charlo an offer because he's his own boss. And he said, oh, I'll talk to Al and get back to you and never got any answer back. So that that was really disappointing as well. That's a decent wonder what, fight. Yeah, it is. That was a real good fight. You wonder what he's thinking. It, it's like you're 29, you're in your prime. You, yeah. you want to get going, man. You yeah, know, make sure. it count. At some, po- at some point, you got to step up and take the big fights. And I think it was about $7 million he got offered or something. It's good money. Chance to unify Jesus. the belts. Nothing to turn your nose up at, man. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> was it just a winnable fight for Charlo, yeah. too? You know, it's a winner. you think it was a winnable fight for him? I think it's for a winnable for fight. Yeah, if he if he can yeah. if he can land on him, then he can knock him out. But um you know, if Andrade was even willing to go and fight on Fox, he was allowed to. <laughs> so yeah, his new contract. He's as long as he he can go and fight on another network. As long as after that fight he comes back to the zone, which was good. So it was it was a doable fight. There was really nothing in the way except uh, willpower. Yeah, man. He just he just didn't want it. Suck. <clears throat> um, I'll drop another link here if anybody wants to jump on. That link will take you straight to the Discord voice channel. You can jump on. Oh, I thought this Hunter versus Parker thing was fresh news, and um, I hadn't heard about the, yeah Junior Far prospect down here in New Zealand. So 
we we'll just turn this into a talk about anything to do with boxing. So if anybody wants to bring up a subject, hit that link, jump on in, don't be shy, and uh, come and give us your yarn. <clears throat> so um, you probably talked it into the ground today. What are they calling it? Glove something? Um, oh, man. Glove, glove gate. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. We were laughing about it. It's like you're trying to say that his hand slipped out of the glove. So his hand is, so his hand was down where the laces are and he's made a fist. How on earth does that increase your knockout power? Oh, well, what it really does is endanger your hand of getting broken because you've avoided the padding. The padding isn't there to stop your fist damaging someone's face. The padding is there to stop you breaking your fucking hand. Yeah, man. <laughs> we're, we're just laughing about it. It just, it just it just doesn't make any sense, you know, because if you had your hand made in a, in a fist, but your hand is, is well down the glove where the laces are, you would effectively have to punch your opponent with the inside part of your hand. Yeah. You, you, could, you couldn't actually throw a punch because you've got this big loose glove in front of your fist. It's, it's just insane. It doesn't make any sense. You know, yeah. they're, they're just traumatized, man. They're just traumatized. That guy lost and they're just reaching for for whatever they can. Uh, I heard somebody talking today. I think it was that that Muppet, what's his name? Uh, El Jefe that you see around. You seen him around? Oh. El, he El, El Jefe. It's um, E-L-J-E-F-F-E. -F -F -E. I saw him on, I think it was uh, Ring IQ was doing a live and he jumped on him. He says, Fanon International Boxing has said that Deontay Wilder wasn't saying his uniform was too heavy. He was talking in the third person, um, saying, I wonder if my suit was too heavy and made my legs. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's just about bringing me to tears watching how oh. sad these guys are getting me. <laughs> oh, it is, man. It is. A, it just, it's like your guy lost. I mean, I hate when my guys lose. I was a Vander Holyfield fan in, in the 90s. I watched them lose to Riddick Bow a couple of times. I hated it. But you just got to wear it, man. David Tua lost, Parker's lost fights. You don't like it when it happens, but damn, you got to try and keep your own dignity and just, you know, you, you, you fight a lost and you just have to suck it up and just wear it, man. You get, you get more respect as a man if, if you come out and say, look, I was wrong. The best man won on the night. Congratulations to him. Hopefully my man can come back and be stronger next time. Yeah, hey, man. Fucking my legs were fucked. My uh, my opponent cheated. Um, uh, audience member influenced my coach to throw the towel. Mark Breland's oh, uh, inside yeah. job because he used to be a crock fighter. What the fuck is all oh this? Oh my shit? god! Mate. And then he contradicted himself, and then they had the video on with him saying how he trained with a forty-five pound suit on. Which, yeah. which just blew that out of the water. <laughs> Man, yeah. it's it's like denial is lasting more than longer than it should. Um, oh yeah, mate. Yeah, 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 they've got to at some point analyze his fight and just say where he went wrong at a tactical level. You know, skill wise and tactics, and try and come up with and, a game plan. Yeah, and even if they think Tyson Fury did fight dirty, you've got to be prepared for that sort of shit. If Oh, the referee yeah, isn't going to pull a, pull a fighter up for it. You've got to have a plan B. You've got to fight fire with fire sometime. Yep, that's, just... see, that's what... That's... Where you go? Yeah, that's, what, that's what Parker needed to do against Dillian, and he didn't. That's right. He let that's Dillian he, foul he all night. Yeah. yeah. Needed some animal. <sighs> um, Question from Quinn here. Thoughts on the Dillian White situation with the WBC mandatory position? Do you think he'll fight for the title this year, Dillian? Do you think he'll get a shot? Or I, ca I can't hmm. see it, eh? I, I, ca I can't uh, actually see it. Maybe early next year? Well, it will it could be at the end of the year, maybe. If um, Joshua's going to stay tight. Oh, true. Up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If um, you know? if Joshua has to fight Usyk or Chisora, and and Fury beats Wilder, 
Yeah, you could see Fury Dillian at the end of the year, eh? Yeah. You could either see Fury and Dillian or Fury and AJ. Well, well, I'm saying Fury because I'm assuming Fury's going to win, but it could be Wilder or Fury, I suppose. So, <laughs> But either of them, it could be them at the end of the year against Joshua or Dillian. And then in February or March, April, somewhere there, it could be the other way around. So... Um, I mean, it's going to be an exciting year. I can't wait, man. Yeah, man. 12, 18 months from now, if shit hasn't fallen into place when everything's been available this time around, man, I'm just going to give up hope for ever seeing Undisputed with four belts at heavyweight. Yep. <laughs> I mean, the, the the champion won't be able to keep them for very long because of the amount of mandatories you'd have to do. You know, yeah. it'll it become very difficult to hold them, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, once you've got those four belts, you can say you, you're the man, and everyone knows you are. Yeah, it's, even if you've only only hold them for two days, you've been undisputed. I mean, it's hard enough to get all belts when there's only three of the goddamn things. Um, but once you've got hold of them, to get that fourth, you still got to take care of your mandatories, and that's the problem. It wouldn't be so bad if one guy had two belts and the other guy had two belts. Be much easier but, um we got what we got <laughs> and uh hopefully we're just going to get to see them all fight each other sooner or later within the next 18 months please <laughs> uh what else have we got in the chat here what's uh, moving In Melbourne? What? He bought Boxing Fantastics in Melbourne. Oh, Boxing Facility. I uh, wouldn't have a clue, man. Uh, actually, I did used to know a guy. I think he's a boxer in Melbourne. Oh, what was it? Shit, he hasn't been around for a while. Can't remember off the top of my head, sorry. <laughs> um, hey what's up fellas how you doing good dog. dog in the house how are you brother oh good man yeah uh about that hergovich thing uh, i saw an article on espn at um <clears throat> about the heavyweight prospects and it had their next fight and it said uh hergovich versus forest what was his next fight so i looked at their schedule and yeah it looks to be penciled in but I guess they're just waiting on an official announcement. I mean, it seems it seems likely it'll be Forrest. Yeah, well, that's okay. Forrest is no bum, but um, I think he'll even put up more of a fight than Eric Molina. But he's not a big fighter. He's only six foot one, so we'll see. Yeah, how, I think he'll get sparked. With. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and Philip Hergovic, when he's in that mood against guys that aren't big names, he doesn't muck around. He just wants to knock knock his opponent, clean the fuck out, and go home. Doesn't get paid for overtime, so. Yeah, man, he just wants to <laughs> smash these dudes. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, that's okay, though. Was there a pencil date for that? Yeah, April 17th. That's, uh, I know the date is on Boxeric. Just, I think the opponent needs to be oh, put in. Like, April that's... 17th, uh, Pro Grey, Hooker, Luke Campbell, Fortuna. That's a good card, man. Yeah. Actually, I did hear about that. Now that you mentioned it, Boxing Squid did something on it. Mentioned the 17th for that card. But, yeah, that's going to be a mean card. Um, looking forward to that one for sure. Better get your opinion quickly. If Michael Hunter and Joseph Parker fought tomorrow, how do you think the fight would go, Aldo? I think Loma, uh, uh, Lomachenko. <laughs> I think Joseph Parker will uh, will stop Michael Hunter. Ooh, stop. Yeah, I think he will because Usyk was actually able to hurt Hunter very badly and i thought that fight should have been stopped in the uh 11th or 12th round i mean he was completely gone on his feet 
stumbling around. I think Parker, I mean, I know he's a bigger puncher than Usyk, right? Usyk is, is a lot smaller than Parker. I mean, Parker has that size. He's, he's quick. Uh, as far as Hunter knocking Parker out, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, a, about as much chance as uh, Wilder outboxing Fury in the trilogy and winning a unanimous decision. <laughs> Not happening. Careful. Careful. <laughs> Alright, a unanimous decision with no knockdowns. Not gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> but I, th I think Parker would stop Hunter, man. Look, Hunter's good, but he has the his movement is very good he's fast but he has the problem that he gasses out and, and when he gasses out parker's gonna swarm him and beat him up yeah i think um if he gets to pick the pace and he you know just warms into the fight then he's got a good chance of outboxing somebody on points at elite level but he tried to go balls to the wall against Pavik, and then that was a recipe for disaster. He was just about out on his feet at the end of that fight. And um, I think Parker can throw just as many, if not more, punches than Pavik. And so I don't think his gas tank would last as long. Maybe he might look Parker look uh, make Parker look slow for three or four rounds at the start, but um, that will soon wear off. <laughs> I don't know if pa um, Parker would stop him myself. I think I'd probably pick a points decision. Hunter's pretty durable. He's pretty uh, evasive at times too. You know, even if he doesn't look like he's evasive, he is. He looks uncoordinated as shit, but he's not. So um, I still think it's a good fight. That's just me. Um, if Parker came down to New Zealand and fought Junior Far, would you get your get your ass to that fight, L Dog? Depending. Yeah, on I, actually, I actually would, man. That's a good fight. Uh, oh, well, I mean, <clears throat> maybe not a good fight, but you know, it's a big fight for New Zealand boxing, really. I think it's it uh, this generation of boxers, Cameron versus Tua. All right. Yeah, that's that's still our biggest pay per view of all time down here, and. Uh, I'm of the opinion that I don't think Parker versus Far would beat it, but, uh, you know... It would draw big Tonga, numbers. It would do pretty good, particularly if it was in South Auckland, where a lot yeah. of the poly, polys live, you know, so... Um, I think... Under yeah. what Sky will charge for it. <laughs> hundred <laughs> bucks. <laughs> hundred gems. Nah, but ass. what I'm thinking is they'll... Uh, DAZN will have that fight to open up the New Zealand market because they'll get a lot of subscriptions at only 10 bucks. Like just first time subscribers, you know, getting that that first month and then the, the second month free kind of thing. Yep. Be a smart that'll idea. Be, that'll be death to Sky New Zealand for sure. <laughs> yeah. I imagine, uh, like, I would have liked Parker to fight junior far right after he lost to white I, that's when they tried to get that fight i think that made the most sense because it would have kind of revived the the hype for parker i think a lot of hype for parker died out when he lost to uh Dillian white yeah when an actor bit... eh? that was one other part of it he just sort yeah. of disappeared on the radar yeah exactly i mean he didn't. He didn't really fight. And he, he hasn't really fought anyone of note since. I mean, Leopai. Oh, Alex, Alex Leopai was an <laughs> ex-title challenger. <laughs> yeah, d all I remember of Leopai was that he got knocked the fuck out by Klitschko. Wow, well, he got. He got, well, he got beat up. Like, yeah, he did get beat up, but. And then I, then I remember he lost to fucking Malik Scott and Manuel Char. I mean, Le Leopoy. Yeah. Oh, true. I mean, I Le can't believe he, he lost to Richard Eisen Ritty. <laughs> yeah, man. This this guy lost to uh, Kevin Johnson, even. Whoa. Was so that that's, more? That's, more that's of how you the know prime he's a bona fide bum. <laughs> yeah 
Uh, he's well past his best, and his best wasn't that great in the first place. <laughs> yeah, that was bad that Parker couldn't stop him early, man. That was a bad look. I was kind of wondering whether there was a bit of um, a gentleman's agreement in that fight. It quite, ho- quite often happens with Samoan. Yeah, Samoans. I was wondering about that because, like, I reckon... I, I was thinking, like, oh, Parker will smash this dude in, like, two rounds. You know, like... If he put the foot down, there's no reason why he couldn't. Yeah, he's... he's I mean, Leopard's old, he's small, he's... He's been beat a couple times. Yeah. He's got a good punch if he can land it, but he's got to yeah. throw it first. He doesn't hardly throw any punches anymore. It's just a walking punch bag. Yeah, but I'd be down for uh, Hunter versus Parker, man. That's a good fight. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I, 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 I like Hunter, man. I think he's a, he's a solid contender at this point. I mean... Anyone who can get a draw with Pavetkin is a contender in my book. I mean, he's only lost to Usyk at Cruiserweight, and Usyk at Cruiserweight, one of the best boxers in, the, in their given weight class across all the boxing, man. For so, a long time, yeah. No shame in that, man. Yeah. I think uh, for a lot of people, Hunter's already exceeded their expectations, but um, I kind of yeah. knew even before he fought Usyk, what kind of fighter he was. Um, do you guys know much about his father? His I know father... he's a pro boxer, the ba- Mike the Bounty Hunter. Yeah. I watched, uh, went back and watched some of his fights. Actually, I remember watching a couple of them. He beat Pinkland Thomas. But he fights, he fights a lot like his father does Michael Hunter Jr. So, um... He's pretty much a carbon copy of him. Go back and watch some of the Michael Hunter Senior's fights. So I knew he was going to cause problems for a lot of guys, and particularly guys who have got slow feet and slow hands, but Kuzma. So. Yeah. I, I, I don't think he will beat Joseph Parker if it happens, but um, there's fighters off that level that I think he could beat. Um, I beat Martin because... Piccoli. Yeah, that's Yo, a pretty good one. That is a pretty good one. He's knocked out guys too that don't get knocked out, like Fabio Maldonado doesn't get stopped. He stopped him. Yeah, um, I mean, look, the the thing about Hunter is his style is actually all right for him, even though he's smaller. He he moves quite a bit, and he can punch on the move, so he, he neutralizes a lot of these bigger guys' power by stopping them from planting their feet and getting off on their offense. I mean, that's why Bacoli lost because he just couldn't deal with the movement. He couldn't, he needed to set his feet to really attack and, uh, Hunter didn't let him do that. Now that being said, Hunter, his stamina will let him down eventually, I think, because he starts off well for the first three, four rounds and then he tires out. I think someone who can cut the ring off well, someone like, a uh, Anthony Joshua, Philip Hergovich, you know, Joseph Parker, someone who's experienced and has those that, that ring generalship will be able to beat him because when he gasses out, they'll still be there and they'll cut the ring off and get to him. Do you think that spare tire he carries is, has something to do with that stamina issue? It's not like fat that he carries. I'm but not. It, it I'm not seats. sure because he did tire out in the Usyk fight. But I, again, Usyk at cruiserweight, his work rate is so high. Yeah. Like that man throws a, a million punches. Yeah. It's but, interesting. Yeah, I mean, he does carry some extra fat. I mean, but he does gas out, man. That that's just something I think he's going to do from now on. Well, there's one for you. Hunter Hergovic. Do you think Hergovic would track him down eventually and fuck him out as well? Or was he not yeah. quite experienced enough yet? I, I think right now he'd beat him, man. I t- I'll tell you, like, mid-rounds. My prediction would be Hunter will take the first few rounds, but Hergovic, he cuts the ring off very well. He, he forces engagements when he, when he wants to because of that. Uh, and in the middle rounds, when Hunter's starting to tire out, He'll get to Hunter, and Hunter won't be uh, 
won't have enough energy to, to keep moving, so he'll be forced to fight back, and that's basically when he, I think he'll get caught and, and get stopped. Yep. Makes sense to me. What do you reckon, Mola? You think Hugo? Who was that against? Hunter? Hunter and Hergovic. Yeah, I think Hergovic, the size factor, I think, in the end, would get the better of it. Whether he knocked him out or not, I'm not sure, but I, I, yeah, I think size-wise, in the end, it would, it would um, pay off for Hergovic. He'd break him down. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think of somebody who would be like a fight that you couldn't pick Hunter or the opponent. Maybe a. Andy Man, I'll, or... I'll tell you the fight I really want to see with Michael Hunter. I wanted to see Michael Hunter versus Dillian White. Fight. That that to me is a fifty-fifty because. I'm not sure how Dillian could handle a guy who can move like Hunter. I mean, Dillian doesn't have the fastest feet, and he's it, because he had a relatively short amateur career, he doesn't have those finer skills when it comes to ring generalship. So I think that's a damn good fight, man. I mean, I think because Hunter is small and, and he'd have to get on the inside, he might get caught with that left hook. But again, that movement, man, that would give... Uh, that would give White a lot of problems. Yeah, I'm thinking too, if White could get hold of him and lean on him with all that extra weight, um, it could contribute to Hunter gassing out. Getting hold of him is another story, isn't it? Uh, but Hunter's got to get close enough to hit him because White's got knuckle-dragging arms, doesn't he? <laughs> so... Yeah, he does eh? He's got long arms for his body. Yeah, man. actually, you just—I've just started to think about that man. His arms, are fucking long. It says they're only seventy-eight inch. Like his reach is only seventy-eight inches. Nah, it's got to be longer than that, mate. It might be yeah, right. Man. Look at the proportion of his body. His his actual torso is actually pretty short, and he's got quite long legs as well. So he's got long legs and long arms, but he's got this stumpy little wide body <laughs> <laughs> now that you've mentioned it i've started to think about it man <laughs> i'm picturing a cartoon now <laughs> yeah, man. oh no oh. Put, a giant, put a giant head on it and look pretty funny <laughs> yeah so, i think i think that's the fight they should have made like in terms of of a, of a good fight i would have rather have seen Hunter versus White and Povetkin, but at the, yeah. I think they chose Povetkin because Povetkin, uh, he has a more established name. I mean, he fought Joshua, he fought Klitschko, and he's only lost to those guys. So if Dillian White beats him, you can guarantee that UK fans would be saying, "Oh, Dillian White, he's beat Povetkin and Parker." You know, guys who have only lost to top guys, and you know. Yeah, they've got to be careful with those comments too, though, because, you know, the comparison between Pavikin and Ortiz gets brought up a lot because they're the same age. But uh, what the people bring in those comparisons up aren't considering as Pavikin's been a world champion, even if it's a fake world champion. Ortiz hasn't. And... Um, you know, he's an Olympic can... gold medalist as well. Olympic gold medalist, yeah, that was what I was in a lot of experience in the amateurs, but he's also fought a lot of quality opposition at in the pros. Whereas Ortiz has fought Bryant Jennings and Lewis Ortiz, and nobody else is worth mentioning. So, um, yeah, it is what it is, but old guys can still be dangerous for sure. We saw it. Ortiz was still dangerous against Wilder in the first fight. Um, even though Wilder cheated. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> oh, nah, it's Tyson Fury the cheater. Hey, you want to know what the latest with these guys is, man? Oh, on, on on March 25th, they're going to the Nevada State Athletic Commission and protesting outside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not. I'm Good. not joking as well, man. Like, <laughs> well, good luck with that. That's <laughs> all I can say. I'm not. Guess that that, that that guy got his ass beat. <laughs> yeah. it, it's not fair. It's racism. 
the white guy's not allowed to win in America against the black. This is what someone <laughs> commented on Sugar Hill's Instagram. For everyone that want to support the Bronze Bomber, be at the Nevada State Athletic Commission's office March 25th, 9am. Hashtag Bomb Squad for life. <laughs> man, these guys are pathetic. <laughs> oh, that is, it's embarrassing, mate. Oh, take the, take the loss, man. Just yep. take it, mate. Take oh, it. No. Move on. Stop whinging and crying because it's getting old. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, there, there are more heavyweights than just uh, than just Wilder, mate. <laughs> yeah, but there there's aren't good... many more American heavyweights. I'll give them that. <laughs> ah, there's when you look after Wilder, who there's no one, no one coming. Yeah, Ruiz. Jono, who do you think is the best like uh, American prospect? Like I, I don't really count Ruiz because he, he's, he's built himself off the whole Mexican fan base. Like, who would you yeah, say is the best of the Americans? <sighs> um, <laughs> um, a lot of them haven't fought any decent level of competition, so we can't pick who's actually quality. You know, we've, we've got Cassius Cheney fought anybody we've got Damani Rock hasn't fought anybody we've got Christopher Lovejoy hasn't fought anybody um Trey Lippy Morrison hasn't fought anybody all these guys are carrying O's though all in their plus 15 fights they need to step up um <laughs> they don't have to wait until they're 32 fights and before they challenge for a world title that's just madness um, particularly if they've already got an amateur background. I can understand to a degree with Wilder, you only had, what, 17 amateur fights or something, and um, like we were talking about the other night, the first 15 or 20 fights of his career, he didn't have a promoter, so he, he couldn't um, make his way, but don't use Deontay Wilder's career as a model for your own. Um, Get in there and fight some of these guys. Don't ask for too much money because you need to take these steps and not make a lot of money to prove yourself to get to the next step where you can make more money. So, um, yeah, man. Reminds me of Canelo. You remember when he fought Kodo? Kodo was the A-side and he got something like a 80-20% purse split. And at the time, I thought that was ridiculous because Canelo was a big star. But I mean, shit, he yeah. was willing to bet on himself and know that if I beat Kodo, I'm the man now, you know, I'm a superstar. That's what these guys got to do, you know, they got to bet on themselves and just bite the bullet and say, well, shit, you know, if I beat him, I'm going to be able to command this. Whereas if I, if I try and command this now, I might not even get the fight. It was like, you remember um, Riddick Bowe fought a guy, Pierre Kutza. And whoever won, uh, I think it was whoever won, got the fight with Evander, and Bo was getting about 200 grand. And he, he didn't like the money. He felt he was being vastly underpaid, which he was, but he took the fight anyway. Yeah. yeah. And it paid off because he won. Sometimes. Yeah, he won, and then he got the fight with, with Evander, and he won that too. So, yeah, yeah definitely. There's some time they, they don't look at the big picture, eh? You know? Yeah. You know, we've got to also look at the other side of the coin, too, with these percentage splits for champions and mandatory challenges and all that sort of thing the guys who get the big split have already taken those steps they've taken that opportunity they've fought for lower money than whoever they were fighting to get there so they've earned the right to earn the bigger share um even you know guys who have been a world champion come back um work their way back up they've kind of got to do that step again and the guy who holds the belt or the guy who holds the mandatory position deserves the split. It's not always the case that they actually deserve it, but that's how it's supposed to work. So, um, yeah, come on, some of you guys with O's. Just take that chance. Back yourself. Put yourself into the frame where you can make more money by earning less money just for one fight. If it's like Joseph Parker. I look at I look at Joseph Parker 
And some people said to me, oh, well, he lost to White and he, he lost to AJ. But I'm looking at his record. He's fought Ruiz, Carlos Tackham, AJ, Dillian White. He fought Huey Fury as a mandatory. And I'm, I'm like, good on you, man. Yeah. You know, he, he might he might have a couple of losses on his record, but hell, the Dillian White fight was a barnstormer. It was a great fight. Everyone enjoyed yeah. it. It was very hard fought. It was a good one. You know, he, exactly. he's, he, he's fought some good people. I'd rather sure. have a resume like Joseph Parker's than like Junior Fars. Exactly. Yeah, man. Yep. Uh, Junior still know, hasn't I, taken that step, eh? Hey? Yeah, Junior, I, I don't think he ever will, to be honest. I think I, he's going to cash out on Parker. Yeah, that'll be his thing. I think he'll probably just even retire after that. Like, he, he I can, I almost think he's not even interested in boxing anymore. Like, He's actually regressed in skills since he was an amateur. Yeah, well, I think I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, you. I went back and watched the fight against Aslan Makhmadov. And he he looked way more slick then than he does now. So what the fuck has happened? <laughs> I think what happened yeah, with just... Junior Farr, I think with Junior Farr, he saw... He walked away from boxing in a way in the amateurs. Then he saw Parker's success and he thought, geez, I used to be able to beat that guy in the amateurs. Look where he is. And then and I think it sort of spurred yeah, him on I to turn pro. But, but, that's but, exactly yeah, why he came back to boxing. Yeah, he said to himself, you know, I, I beat that guy it. twice. <laughs> I beat that guy twice and he's making millions of dollars. I can do that. So why not? And, to a degree, you know, if I was six foot five, six foot six, 260 pounds, and I'd already had an amateur boxing career and not done too bad, and I saw that, I would go, fuck yeah, I want that money too. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about the heavyweight division is there's always going to be money in it, regardless if the viewers are there or not. Yeah. You know, there's a, the, you look at the purses in the heavyweight division compared to the purses and say, a lightweight division i mean you got guys like lomachenko making two three million a fight but in the heavyweight division you can probably get guys like adam kovnatsky making around that money yeah quite possibly oh well they keep it pretty close to their chest there's a pbc what they what their fighters yeah. make if they're not champions but um I don't know. Man, what do you think about that peanuts. fight? Kovnatsky versus uh, Hellenius. That's this weekend, eh? It is this weekend, and it's got a few decent heavyweight matchups on there as well. Um, I think the Hellenius Kovnatsky fight is pretty much a foregone conclusion. I don't think. Unless Hellenius lands a shot in the first sort of four rounds that hurts Kovnatsky, I don't see him having the gas tank to keep um, Kovnatsky off him. He won't have the volume to do it, and he'll get sparked when he starts gas gassing out. So, um, yeah, let you guys go around and have an opinion on that before I move on to the other fights. You want to have a go, Mala? What one was that? Uh, Hellenius versus Kalnaki this weekend. How's that going to go? Uh, I'll go Kalnaki. Yeah. Stoppage? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yep, yeah, I think so. All right. Your turn, L Dog. Yeah, I'm in a, I'm in agreement, man. I think Kovnatsky will stop him. I, I might actually even say I think he stops him early. Wow. Because Kovnatsky's a, a quick starter, man. He'll come right at you, throwing a lot of punches. You got to so, remember though, he's six foot two, or was he six foot three? Sorry, six foot three, and Hellenius is six foot seven. It's not like. Oh, that's a good... Yeah, actually. <laughs> Might have to rethink <laughs> that because... <laughs> hey, he'll probably yeah. go to the body more then. He'll but yeah, I think, I think he'll stop him at some point. Like, for sure. Yeah. I, I think, I it think it'll just be a matter of time, I think. Yeah. Four to six rounds, I think you'll see Hellenia start to capitulate. Nah. As soon as Kaneki gets a sniff that Hellenia is tired... It's going to be three or four punches later. <laughs> you go. But, um, yeah, there are some other matchups on that card. We've got unbeaten prospect um, Frank Sanchez, 14 and 0, is fighting Joey DeWaco. That's a um, good fight, man. I'm t 
for some that's reason, a good step up. Yeah, like look, Dewicko is actually pretty tough, man. He's only a only a midget, <laughs> really, when it comes to the heavyweight division. He's only like five nine or five ten, but um, there's a reason why a lot of elite guys use him as a sparring partner. He's he's pretty good for his size. So um, we're gonna see what Frank Sanchez is made of in this fight. I think. I thought he uh, beat uh, Sergey Kuzman. Uh, Dweko. Yeah. Was that one of his draws? That was a majority decision to Kuzman, and that was when okay. Kuzman was undefeated. Yeah. So I, I actually thought that was a close fight, man. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at his resume. He lost to a mere man in 2015. He, he lost to Bryant Jennings, Sergey Kuzman. He's beat guys like Rodney Hernandez, who, you know, a typical yeah. kind of journeyman. But, the, you know, Rodney Hernandez is a tougher journeyman than most. Yes. Uh, he, yeah. he, he goes the distance with some guys. I uh, see uh, he lost to... Oh, he got a draw with Gerald Miller. Huh. Yeah. Four yeah, rounds was quite a while ago. Yeah. So like this this guy's actually he's been in there with Gerald Miller, Charles Martin, Sergey Kuzman, Amir Mansur, um, right you know Bryant Jennings. He's been in there with some tough names, man. Like this. I don't think he has he been stopped. He's been stopped once, and that was a referee technical decision. TKO. Yeah, there you go. Probably so, cuts or something. Yes, yeah, so, so look, he, he's tough, man. And the thing about these Cuban guys is that they, I know it's a bit of a stereotype, but their jaws aren't that good, man. And I wonder if uh, Deweco can crack him. If he can get to him, it's quite possible, man, because he can crack too, you know. He's the guy who was rumoured to have knocked Anthony Joshua out in training prior to Andy Ruiz's fight, the first one, so. Hey, he I saw crack. a good meme, man. Joshua's uh, record right now is what, 23-1, and 22-1? His record in sparring is 0-100 with 100 knockouts, 100 <laughs> knockout losses. <laughs> I swear every man and his son has knocked Anthony Joshua out in sparring, apparently. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I think, I think that um, Sanchez, I think Sanchez might have to win this one on points. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, he looks tough, um, Dueco. Yeah. Sanchez he's, looks old, man. He's, he's not guy. 27. <laughs> well, it's it's a common um, conception that you know Cuban defectors lie about the age when they come and get a birth certificate in America. So, how much truth is in it? I don't know. What's the point of lying about your age? I don't get it. <laughs> Yeah, does it make them uh, look more like attractive to to be signed by a promoter? I don't know, but he he does. I think that's yeah, he does he does look significantly older than our uh, twenty seven. Yeah. Um. Have either you got him up on box right there? Yeah. Uh, yep. How tall is he? Is he six four? Or seventy eight inch reach? Yeah. So he's like the he's a uh... six four size. He's training with Canelo's trainer, so I wonder if that'll help him out. Mm. Who's his trainer? I can't think off the top of my head. Uh, Eddie Reynoso. Ah, uh, that's it. Yeah. Uh, I think they're That'd quite good trainers, so... Who knows? But, uh, yeah, I'm expecting a... I'm actually expecting a close decision, because the way to beat that Cuban style is to be a pressure fighter. and It's kind of how Deweco is, man. Yeah, well, that's... Come at you. He has to be when he's only 5'10". Yeah. <laughs> Didn't have a choice. But, um... Uh, can yeah. you know, be a meme fight? Deweko versus Hemi Ahio. Boom! <laughs> that would be awesome! <laughs> that's a great step up, man. Yeah. No one's taking a step back unless they're getting smashed. Yeah. <laughs> um... So there was another fight on that card, uh, Robert Alfonso, who's another, I think he's unbeaten. And he's he's got a draw, though. Is that right? Because you guys have got that. 
Yeah, I'll have a look. Robert Alfonso. Oh, he's a Cuban guy as well. Yeah. Hmm. I can't remember who he's fighting. I did cover it this morning, but fucking near me like a fish. This guy <laughs> says he's 33, man. He's He's got more... He's got more grey hairs on his head than than fucking Me? Carl Frotch right now, man. <laughs> this, <laughs> this dude, this dude's like full grey. Yeah, there's oh. no way he's uh. <laughs> this is another Cuban, Cuban 33, which is really 53. Yeah, yeah. Um, who's he fighting, man? Oh, I'm sitting outside. I'm just Negron. Yeah, Carlos. Oh, Carlos Negron. Negron. Yeah, that could be an interesting fight too, I think, because um, Carlos Negron's actually not a bum. Um, he gave Brazil some decent work before he got sparked. So um, that one could be pretty interesting as well. I like these fights where we, I can't really pick, but to be fair, I haven't watched a lot of either Frank Sanchez or um, Robert Alfonso. I've seen a few clips of them, and that's about it. Neither. This will be my first time, but you know I'll be watching. Uh, look, by the looks of it, Carlos Negron, his chin is not the best, but he's a big guy and he's got quite a few KO victories. So who knows? He might be a glass cannon, in which case could be an interesting fight because his opponent, uh, Alfonso's six one and knee or something like that. He's only small dude. Yeah, well, Afon Alfonso only has nine KOs in 20 fights, which isn't much for a heavyweight, so mm. he might not have that much power, so this guy's chin might not even be a problem. He's a good fight, actually. Decent yeah. matchmaking. Have a look and see if there's any odds on that fight. That... So I imagine people will look at Alfonso and see the O and go, oh, wow, he's going to win. Oh, wow, he beat not... Luis Ortiz in the amateurs. Who? Uh, Alfonso. Yeah, Alfonso. Oh, there goes the boogeyman theory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. Oh, he lost to him and you... he beat him. I'm um, looking at Boxerick. They've got their new amateur thing. Like, you can look at oh, some of the amateur fights. I saw some of that. Actually, I have to look at that. I haven't looked into it yet. Yeah, so this guy might actually that not be that bad. I've been looking for a lot of information from the amateurs, and it's just so hard to find it. Yeah, man. If there's any out there, but um, that'll be handy. Is the amateur stuff on boxing right now? Uh, if you look like on their page, it'll be right by. The, it's got their name, and then it's got their ID underneath. You go it across pro it's boxer. like pro boxer, yeah, and then am. Yeah, yeah. says am next to it. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> I only spotted that this morning myself. Um, yeah, and um, of course we've got Ephra Jagba on that card as well, Razvan Kajanu. That one ain't going past six, I don't think. Um, what do you guys reckon of that one? Yeah, I think Jagba will hammer him. Hand-picked hammering. Yeah, Jagba, he's an interesting one because people were really high on his hype train not too long ago. Then, deflated a lot since that Ali yeah. ran Demirizan fight, eh? But Demirizan is not a bad fighter, man. Yo, yeah, well, people see the th see the name that they don't recognize um, and think he's a bum, but he he was a pretty established amateur. He was an Olympian too, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh... So, and the thing the thing that impressed me with a Jagbar is like you know when he got knocked down. He got hit on the point of the chin. Yeah. He didn't get oh, hit on the jaw, but man, he got hit right on the point of the chin, man, and he got back up, and I thought, wow. You know, a lot of people, when they get hit there, they stay down, you know? Well, I've been yeah. a fan of his matchmaking because it's teaching him valuable lessons. You know, it's it's not just some can he can crush. It's someone who's going to give him some resistance, and when he eventually steps up to the, the big league, I think he'll be... He'll be happy he had those fights to teach him those valuable lessons. I would have liked to have seen him in there against the Waco instead of Frank Sanchez. That would have been a Yeah, that would have been a good test. fight. Mind or you. Even, uh, or even put them against each other, Frank Sanchez versus a, a Jugba. 
well there you go that's even better they're more similar size so um yeah we'd see how good um sanchez's chin is real quick i think on that one <laughs> but um it's a pretty good weekend of boxing man we've also got huey fury and his parvel sour <laughs> oh you just you just you just made it from a good weekend to huey fury mate <laughs> yeah um i've actually found out a little bit more about parvel sour and he's not quite as bad as i thought he was gonna be so i think for here it's gonna be a case of whether he can stop him or not but i don't think it's gonna be a didn't sour uh, give jermaine franklin a pretty good fight yeah went the distance man um i saw the punch stats it, and he landed quite a few punches so yeah but... yeah well as you probably know though i don't have much of a high opinion of Jermaine Franklin I don't think he's anything special I think he's solid as a like a national level gatekeeper in America maybe but um I don't think he's ever going to be a world champion I don't think he's even going to get a title shot to be honest so <clears throat> um nah. yeah we'll see what happens um At, uh, 11 fights six KO two losses one KO 37 years of age got Huey's only 25 he's young eh Oh, yeah. When he fought Parker, he was only 22, was he? I think 22. And if he had a won that fight, he would have been uh, the second youngest world champion of all time. Only to Mike Tyson as heavyweight. Um, as it was, when Joe won his title, he at 24, he was the fourth youngest heavyweight titleist ever couple of useless facts for y'all <laughs> yeah. fort hergovic he's fort hergovic hergovic eh? he's yeah yeah got sparked <laughs> in one though <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> right. um, what was the fight after that because he lost two in a row there eh? if i can oh no, pay, no, no. Pay... Some... no he lost to what jermaine franklin okay oh uh, yeah how many losses has he got just the two Yep, two losses. Yeah, and Franklin was his last fight, wasn't it? Yeah, we'll see how it goes, but I I'd really Huey like to, to see him. some. I'd really like to see Huey stop him, because if he does stop him, he's going to have to have shown some improvements instead of trying to fucking run away before the jab lands, or run away before the fucking right hand lands. Make sure you step into it and land it before you run away, Huey. Yeah, what's the deal with uh with Huey, man? Because I see he won a youth amateur world championships gold medal, and then you know he got all the way to twenty and zero. Fort Parker lost. Okay, you know he might have learnt from that. He was very young. Fort yep. Pulev lost again. You know, could have learned from that. And then he lost to Pavic, and I'm just thinking now, like this guy's fought a lot of good names. Like, surely he's he's got a bit of experience for a. Uh, but he's only 25. Oh, well, he's got some experience at elite level. He's learned how to lose. Let's hope it doesn't stay that way. But yeah. um, what was the excuse for losing against Pavekin? Because it was a cut in Pulev's fight, wasn't it? Didn't he say he had like a skin condition or something? He ran out of gas against Pulev, didn't he? He looked awful. Yeah, I'm trying to put my... I can't remember the, the fight against Pavikin. He should have beaten Pavikin. With somebody who can move like that, who's got a decent jab, he should have been able to pop and move all night. Especially being a much younger fighter. So, I'm not saying he should be giving excuses. I'm trying to find, think of a valid excuse why he lost to Pavikin. <laughs> Yeah, man, he just seems to mentally not not be that hungry. He's got it's kind of like Joseph Parker in that sense. Sometimes you see him and you just think he's like, "Fuck, made a little bit more sense of urgency." Like, come on, <laughs> man, but one hundred percent. He says that a lot. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Like, you <clears throat> just need to to grab a gun and hold it to your family and be like, now come on, Joe, knock him out or else I'm yeah, gonna yeah. pull the trigger. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, they they got... both coast, man. It's annoying. It's frustrating. Yeah. yeah, well, they call it boxing and being slick, but um, it's not really. It's just taking a rest. Throw your fucking hands, man. If you go, yeah, exactly. if you go down, you go down. If you don't, then you win. So. I've always looked at Parker, I've said this before, you know, I, I look at his hand speed and his combination punching and, and he could be like a Vander Holyfield. Yeah. He could fight that, you know, that aggressive go first on the inside, get your shots off and Vander didn't shy away from, he wasn't the biggest puncher, but he just, he had a great, great uh, combinations and great hand speed and he used it as an equaliser. Yeah. And I, I sort of look at Parker and I wish he would do that a bit more. He knew how to rough He's these guys really... up on the inside as well. Yeah, 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 man. He's yeah, he had got a really fight good jab that, too. Right? If he actually used that jab more often, it, yeah, I mean, he's had some um, advice from Larry Holmes. He's visited him a few times. He's showed him how to jab and how to just pop the jab, pop the jab, slap with it, pop with it all night. But he doesn't. So I don't know. It's a, it's a common theme, and I've said it a hundred times with Joseph Parker. He's got all the talent in the world, all the athleticism in the world, but he just can't seem to put it all together to get the right combination and let it come naturally to him. But, yeah, man. I think if he improved his inside game, uh, like uh, just working on get the inside, getting enough distance, like... I think he'd be he'd be fucking hard to beat because his jab and his hand speed is quite good. So he can jab his way into the inside, and his chin's solid as well. So he can stay in the pocket and keep throwing at you, man. I reckon he'd be damn hard to beat, but for some reason he just doesn't do it. I'm thinking to myself too. You know, he's got the same coach that David Tour had, and David Tour's inside game was pretty fucking good. So why can't that translate through the coach? Is Kevin Barry that bad of a coach? <laughs> yeah, man. I, I I would have liked to have seen Parker change trainer, to be honest with you, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. Carry on, set, yeah, what they're, they're pretty much, yeah, they're going to... I've heard people saying for years, oh, leave Barry. I, like, I told him, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, mean, I would have said the same, but... It's just, it's not happening, eh? Yeah. I'm he'd have to lose like three well. fights in a row or something. He'd have to, something catastrophic would have to happen before he, he did that, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's just not going to be. I've, I gave up on, I, I stopped worrying about that. People used to say it. And I'd be like, don't even, don't even think it. <laughs> it's just not happening. Oh. I do believe, though, that Barry's kind of taken him to where he can take him. I think maybe a new That's trainer it. just to work on a couple different things. Like, you know who I'd love to actually have train him? Sugar Hill. Yeah. Man, like, I, I think, you know, if he was in Fury's camp, you know, maybe maybe he could even go over to top rank when his match room thing's over, you know. He could just be in that, that top rank gym in Vegas training with Sugar Hill, you know, getting the good sparring with Fury and... uh tony yoker and whatnot you know i think he'd really improve but in, instead he's he, he's getting that sparring but his his train is just he, he's reached his limit with him i think tapped out man he's tapped out on barry's knowledge or what barry can teach him and... he has he has man yeah, yeah there's we haven't seen anything new you know for quite a while eh? it's just how many how many times have you heard Kevin Barry say you haven't yet seen the best of oh, Joseph Parker? Fuck sakes! <laughs> Is it every <laughs> single fucking fight he says the same line? And he's in the and best shape. Of his life. Yeah. He's in the best shape of his life. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'll I, tell you what. It would have been uh, nice to have seen the best version of Joseph Parker against AJ or White. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Mind Might you, have th that referee. A couple more belts around his waist. Oh, yeah, that prick. Uh, Giuseppe Cortellone. I'll never forget that prick's name. That was <laughs> fucking awful, man. I rewatched that fight not too long ago. And, and I remember uh, Joe actually 
was starting to get on the inside, man. AJ didn't look comfortable. And, and I know hindsight's twenty twenty, but when I saw Ruiz work on the inside, he was able to piece AJ up, man. I think, not saying Parker would have won, but fuck me, it would have been a much more interesting fight, you know, if they had to let Joe work on the inside. But he just, look, I understand you don't want guys, you know, clinching non-stop, but you got to let them work a bit, you know? Or well, got to let them try and at least get their arms free before you That's why it. the fight never took off, because, you know, sometimes you'll see a fight, when it starts, it's cautious. Yeah. There'll be a few rounds, it's cautious, but then one guy lands a big one, and then the other guy and lands like, a oh, big one. Oh, I've got to get him back. Yeah. And then it's on. And the fight's on. It just takes off. And and it, the, the fight was never able to do that, because he, he the referee wouldn't let the, the fight ignite. You know, he, he just killed it, eh? He just killed it all the time. Yeah, it got man, to the that point. Shit was annoying. I think it was like the eighth round. Joe actually got inside the reach and landed a body shot, and you saw Joshua buckle over a little bit. But Joe backed off because he'd gotten so used to the referee stepping in between them and breaking it every time someone got a half a punch in close. He didn't jump on him, you know? So. I remember yeah. that. I remember when that happened. Almost reminded me of an amateur referee, just in the sense that he just wanted to see work from the outside, straight punches, you know, no yeah. body work or inside fighting. But that, that's what professional boxing is about, man. Like, it's about those those combinations, those, you know, punching, working on the inside, these wearing your opponent down as opposed to just outpointing them over three rounds. Yeah. Oh. The, frust the frustrating thing for me, it wasn't like three weeks later after that fight, I saw that guy refereeing, refereeing another fight. It was uh, like a super middleweight fight or something. I can't remember who it was. But it was either uh, he'd been told not to let Joe work on the inside for that fight, or he took the criticism from the fans about how he adjudicated to heart because that fight I saw him riffing three weeks later he was letting the guys fight in close and that was a good inside fight it fucking pissed me right off tell you, tell you what man this is typical corruption and boxing here you get these big promotional companies like PBC, Top Rank and uh, Matchroom now, they, don't fix, they don't fix fights but they sure as hell put the odds in their fighters favours like you look at a lot of referees a lot of these referees are predominantly employed by one promotion company. You look at Harvey Dock, he's predominantly doing PBC cards. You look at Ian John Lewis, he's predominantly doing matchroom cards. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, Giuseppe Corderone, I mean, I've, I've never heard of him, but I, I'm, I'm pretty willing to, I'm willing to bet that if I were to look on Boxerick at the cards he reffed, the majority of them would be matchroom cards, you know. What they do is they get these refs and they keep employing these refs, so these refs kind of think like, oh, well, this company keeps employing me, so, you know, I I'm getting paid by them. i got to think about who they want to win, and i, I got to be a little more lenient. That's what you saw with that guy Ian John Lewis when uh, Parker got head-butted, man. Like Ian John Lewis is a is a shit referee. He's one of the worst referees I've seen, man. Like his jo shot. his job he that Hergovic Molina fight was awful. Yeah, yeah. He let he let um he not only that head the, the head clash with with Dillian he 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 let Dillian foul after that repeatedly, just repeated blatant fouls. Never took a point. Nothing, man. And when, when you look at the ref and the AJ fight stepping in between them, that absolutely screwed that fight. Then the Dillian White fight, the ref sucked in that too. It, yeah. It's rough, man. You, know, you have to take the losses, but you can still, it's still not, you know, you can still admit that the refs were shit. They were fucking do, awful. Do the promoters actually pay the refs or do the commissions? Like, or I'm pretty sure I heard like promotional companies they can choose the refs and, and the judges but they have to be uh registered with the athletic commission 
That's why you get a you get a lot of a lot of guys like um just watch the prelims for a big boxing card, man. They'll have some prospect on there, and just the corruption in it is unbelievable. You know, you've got these high-profile referees riffing these small things, and if the prospect or the guy who's supposed to win gets knocked down, you know, you'll see a long count, or you'll see it be ruled a slip. You even see this in the big leagues. They're not fixing fights, but... Like I said, you know, they're employing the same judges they always employ. So those judges feel some sort of loyalty to the promotional company. They're employing the same ref over again. You know, picking specific styles of refs that will suit the sort of fight. Mm. Just like the ref in the Fury Wilder fight. Yeah. He took the point, he took the the point off Fury. Um, the second fight, he oh, took the Kenny point Bayless. off Fury. Yeah, he took right. the point off him and things, and you know, mm. yeah. There was um that riff from the first fight too. Um, oh, what was it? Jack Reese. Like, Jack Reese. He gave Tyson that long, longish count, and yeah. made him do the walk and whatnot. Um, that was fine and dandy. There's nothing wrong with it if you're gonna be consistent, but. Um, there was a fight a few weeks ago that he stopped oh, with three I seconds saw to that. go. Oh. I was like, what the fuck, Jack Reese? Yeah, man. <laughs> that pissed me off. And ironically, the guy who he stopped with three seconds to go, who was winning the fight, had darker skin than the other guy. <laughs> Does that ring bells for you? <laughs> uh, Jack Reese is just... I mean, look, I'm not going to say he's a bad ref, but he just seems inconsistent with his stoppages. Like, he let that Fury Wilder fight go on. I mean, let's be real here, guys. If you were the referee for that fight, the first one... Uh, would I would have you... stopped it. Yeah, I would have stopped it as well, man. When the dude's lying flat on his back, not moving by the time you get to five, that's it. I'm not You're saying not it's, to... it's the right thing to do, because I think Jack Reese made the right call, but in that moment of time, I yeah. would have stopped it. Exactly. Me it's too. It's like the ref for Marquez Pacquiao. If he if he waved the fight off when Marquez was knocked down three times in the first round, people probably would have had no problem with it. But you know, now we look back, we think, wow, that, that's, that was a great call. But Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I guess... You know, we have our ideas about who are good refs and who aren't. You know, I, I up until the inconsistency I saw from Jack Reese, I thought he was a pretty good ref. I thought Kenny Bayless was a pretty good ref as well. Um, but I thought he handled that rematch very poorly. Um, he let Tyson get away with too much, in my opinion, um, with regard to clinching and not breaking when he was supposed when he was told to. Um, but you know, and he guys... had the illegal gloves that had knives in them and guns in them <laughs> and, <laughs> and bricks Bushies, in them. anvils, <laughs> explosives. <laughs> <laughs> That's why his um hand looked like it was out of the glove, he had so much in there, yeah, man. But um, you know, I'd, I'd like to see them get um Steve Smoger for the for oh, the yeah. Match. That'd be awesome. Man, I'll tell you who um, my favorite of all time is. Mills Lane. He's the man. He is the man. There's no denying Mills Lane is the man. Uh, yeah, I wish he was man. still riff. He is the man. He's still alive? Yeah, Mills I just Lane? looked it up. He's still, he's still alive. Didn't take any shit from any fighter, man. Not even Mike Tyson, yeah. man. Take it's funny because he was a short dude as well. <laughs> Marine or something. Like that. He is a tough Balls guy, of steel. Though, man. Yeah. Balls of steel. But the the worst riff I've seen is Lawrence Cole, man. Uh, he he's the one who riffed uh, Lomachenko versus Salido. I saw this other fight, man. Like this this the A side got knocked down, and you could hear him on the microphone. He said. You know, when he was getting up, he said, come on, man, you're a hit on the scorecards. Let's go. And I'm just thinking, like, what the fuck? Why would a ref ever say that to a fighter? Like, that's not professional. That's dodgy. <laughs> that's fucked. Yeah. Um, we got a couple of good refs down here, too. 
old Lance Revel. He's a he's a fucking dickhead, but he's a pretty good ref. Um, and who's that other guy who's uh, he has a stable of boxes, and you see him as a ref sometimes. Bald guy, white guy. Um, fuck is his name? Uh, oh god damn it! It's left my head now. He's all over Glade Rap channel all the time. <coughs> Never mind. But um. Oh. oh what's his name? Fuck you know the guy me. I'm thinking of, don't you? Yeah. He, he trains uh. He's a trainer too. Yeah, he used to be a boxer, and he's he's quite a big dude. Uh, quite tall. Fuck, that's gonna eat me now. Yeah, I hate it when I remember faces, but I just forget names. Yeah, he trains that guy. Uh, I think he's a cruiserweight. Um, well, he might be a light heavyweight. New Zealand guy. He's unbeaten still. Professional. Can't remember his his name either. David Light. Is that the one? Oh, David uh, Light. I mean. I don't know if it is David. No, because David Light's not professional yet, is he? Uh, I think he did turn pro. Or oh, maybe he it is David Light. The... Yeah, it might be David Light. But that's not the name of the guy. Uh, fuck. I'm going to my computer. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think, man. I'm trying to figure this shit out. <sighs> he even um, put some boxing shows on. I think he's a promoter as well. Um, is it si Simon's? That's gonna piss me off. But never mind. Well, I'll forget about it for now. I'll find it and I'll remember it for next time I talk to you guys. But um, I think yeah. we've been on kind of late enough on sort of uh training my body clock for this weekend because that Dempsey McKean fight is going to be pretty late here in New Zealand being two hours behind Australia I'll be doing a stream on that oh I'll tell so, you what there is this weekend uh for keep for boxing in New Zealand David Naika he's uh he, he's fighting as Olympic qualifier I think ooh. Is he only needs to win this one uh, amateur bout to get into the Olympics? So I'll be trying to see if I can find a stream for that. See, is anything on I've always wondered if he's gonna go pro. Well, he was talking about it because he was in camp with Joe at one stage for a while there doing some sparring. He was talking about how he he's encouraged by the fact he can hold his own against the the big boys so it was going to probably... yeah i mean he's not bad he, he, he's quite a naturally gifted guy he's very athletic but i just think his style is horrible for the professionals like he's gonna have to really correct a lot if he wants to yeah it's all about pick. facebook uh all about volume for him isn't it and yeah you can't do that in the pros when you've got to go 12 rounds um, he's got his hands down. He's like a reflex fighter almost. Yeah. Like a, a, a Prince Nassim, I mean. <laughs> you know that style? Just yeah. Sort of... <laughs> <laughs> I put in David Naika and Google Boxrick. That came up with David Tool. <laughs> so maybe they don't have. If a fighter isn't professional. Maybe they don't have amateur information. Or maybe they don't have anything on a box that hasn't been pro. So you only get the amateur information pro box. This sucks. It is N-A-I-K-A, isn't it? Uh, I think it's N-Y-I-K-A. Yeah, N Y, A K I K. Oh yeah, here he is. It's on box rig. Amateur and his fight is TBA. But yeah, he's is... got to fight a. He he he's got to buy. I think he he said on social media. He's 
it's got like a buy for the first round and then that day he'll be fighting the winner of uh it's like the quarterfinals this in a terrible nation this got the event here and it's got some that tell usually it has television <clears throat> on there so who's fighting it's definitely going to be on sunday though new zealand time see if we can find some streams for that um maybe i'll give you some uh moderator powers so you can start dropping links on the discord as well then l dog oh cheers mate yeah i'll try uh I'll try find it. I think he usually posts it to his social media so his followers can get it. Like, okay. I, I don't know what what kind of uh, stream it'll be. It might just be on someone's someone's phone. But I mean, should I watch it? Nothing, man. Yeah, Good hey, he's a Kiwi. Got to support him. Got to back our boys. All right. Um, so we've been on for a while, fellas. It's. Uh... 10.50 yeah. p.m. Go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah man. Uh, got shit to do tomorrow, so appreciate you boys coming in for a chat. And... Yeah, you guys have a good one, eh? It was a good good chat. Yeah, man. I'm off to sleep. Have a good one, old dog. Take it <laughs> easy, fellas. Sweet, man. Take it easy, guys. Um, thanks to everybody in the chat as well for popping in. Uh, see AA Boxing and Blunts is in here. Um... So we've got Marla's in there chatting away. We've got the Prophet in here as well. Another Kiwi. Uh, yeah, David Naika. I'm trying to... Maybe one of you boys will be able to think of the coach's name. He's a promoter here in New Zealand. He's also a referee. He's a coach. He's got his own gym. He's got a few New Zealand fighters. He trains some of the New Zealand fighters. I can't remember his name. I've also got Mason Taylor in the house. Good to have you. Let's try and get through a bit of a roll call here. Or get a few people's names in here. But I uh, really do appreciate you all coming in for a bit of a yarn. Um, it's been a bit of a off, off the title topic stream, but uh, it's been rather enjoyable. Yeah. So. Plenty of topics. Yeah. It's been great, so thanks for popping in, y'all, and we will catch you next time. Peace. Good job, mate. So that's it for today. Appreciate y'all coming and checking out the Big Boys Boxing content. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Also, if you want to get more involved, you can go to the Big Boys Boxing channel page and over here on the top right there's this discord icon here if you click on that it will take you to the big boys boxing discord server this is it here and these are the text channels here the info is all about the channel and how to get involved general chat we all just talk about boxing any subject everybody's welcome live fight links I drop links here that will take you to live fight events I generally drop the link here 24 hours before the fight so if you don't have a broadcast you can come here and find a way to watch it also fights that I do record I will be posting here I've got a couple here already as you can see and down here the voice channels live panel if you'd like to get involved with the live YouTube streams, the panel is on here. Once you get here, you just click on live panel, and as you can see, you're in. If you'd like to mute at any point, there is a little mic icon here. Click on that, and you are muted. And if you'd like to leave the call, this is your hang up button. Simple as. And down here, this is anytime chat. It's another voice channel you can get on here and talk with anybody who's in there about whatever you want to talk about it's free for all so get involved i'm jono from big boys boxing and i will catch you 
next time. See you.